Hey guys, welcome back to my Animal Adventures YouTube channel and in this episode I want to talk about feeding your ball pythons and believe it or not, snakes are completely different than almost all other animals. Their size is really dependent on the amount of food that you feed them and I want to talk specifically in this episode about something that's really taboo in the ball python industry and that is called power feeding. Okay, so I want to kick things off by showing you the difference between two snakes and it's a really huge difference between the size of the rodent that you feed them. And as a matter of fact, I fed each snake on a regular basis once a week. And, and typically my, my hatchlings that I sell at the shows I have here in this rack, I actually have about 40 hatchlings left that I'm selling at the shows. And I feed them pretty much one rodent per week. And I also feed my holdbacks one rodent per week. I have my holdbacks in these tubs. And the only difference between the ones I'm selling at the show and the ones that I'm holding back is the size of the rodent. <laughs> and uh, really, I started at the same size. Both of them started on hoppers right away. And then for the ones I'm selling at the show, I changed to weanlings, which is a little bit bigger than a hopper. And then for my holdbacks, what I actually did is I upgraded to adult the jumbo mice, uh, basically the retired breeder mice. <laughs> Let me tell you, the difference between the ones I'm selling at the show and my holdbacks, there is a huge difference. And I'm going to set this camera up on this tripod and I want to show you the difference between those two snakes. So here is one of the snakes that I'll be selling at the upcoming show here at the Reptilian Nation in Denver. The spring of 2019, <laughs> I'll have this one for sale. This is a female bamboo. And if you look at her, she looks perfectly healthy. And you really can't tell that I've been feeding her smaller rodents just by looking at her. And as a matter of fact, unless you really underfeed a snake, it doesn't really affect the body condition of the snake. It's, it's pretty interesting. Now let me show you my holdback compared to this. And I, this is the one I've been feeding the weanlings and my holdback that I'm going to show you next. That one I was feeding adult jumbo mice. Let me show you the difference between the two. Okay, so here is the female bamboo. This is from Clutch 5. And my other one is also from Clutch 5. And take a look at this beast of a snake. And look at the difference in the size between the two. It's really amazing how much bigger this one is compared to this bamboo. This is my pastel calico bamboo uh, that's that I'm, uh, one of my holdbacks that I'm really feeding a lot bigger. He's actually moved from the jumbo adult mice to small rats. He's actually up on rats now. And I'm still feeding the, the female bamboo, the weanling mice, and you could definitely tell by the difference in the size that I'm feeding one bigger rodent sizes than the other. I'm still feeding them once a week, but one's just getting bigger rodent sizes than the other. So even though the one of the snakes I'm feeding rodents that are a lot bigger than the other, it's really not considered power feeding. And power feeding, really what it is, 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 it's, is it's taking a hatchling and feeding that snake as much as it'll take, usually multiple times per day or multiple times per week, with the main goal of trying to get that snake to produce eggs as fast as possible so you have a return on investment. And I think where it really gets the bad name is you're not really concerned with the animal's health, you're more concerned about the money that you'll make from the animal. And really, I don't think it's good to really push your snakes. I think a, a feeding once a week is really uh, pretty much the, the universal schedule of feeding for ball pythons. And if you go above that, it's, it really depends on the snake. And, and I say there's a few times where I have actually power fed a snake. And let me show you one of those times. So take a look at this ball python. This is a female. I actually picked her up on Craigslist for free. Uh, it was one of my very first snakes. And when I first got her, she was incredibly tiny. She was, she was the size of a hatchling and she was a year old. I couldn't even believe it. And the guy was feeding it hopper mice once a month. She was so skinny and so underweight. And when I got her, she ate like two, two mice in the first day. And then the second day, she ate two more. And really what I did is, is this is the only time I really power fed a snake. And it's really because she was so underfed. And I really wanted to get some weight on her because 
So it, was, uh, it didn't really seem healthy for the animal to be that old and that small. And, and the funny thing about it is she grew so fast. She grew faster than all my other snakes. And I think it's really because she had the age, but she didn't really have the weight. And she caught up just perfectly fine. And she's, she's, she's right on par with, the, with snakes the same age. So really, if you underfeed a snake, let me tell you, they can catch up really fast. And they, it seems like their metabolism catches up for their age and not really doesn't really set them back if you underfeed them, which is pretty amazing. So there's only one other time that I feed really heavy, and I guess you could consider it power feeding, but it's only for a short amount of time, and it's only right before the breeding season, and it's only for the females. Now keep in mind, if the females start breeding, they start developing follicles, they can actually fast for six to nine months where they go off of food and they don't eat, and it's really critical to get a lot of food into them. And a lot of people don't understand, I think, because uh, especially when I was feeding my snake Lucy and I was feeding her 10 rats all in a row and she's a big snake she weighs probably between 50 and 60 pounds and I was really just giving her as much as she would eat as, as pretty much back to back until her, her body condition was to the point where I didn't think she could take anymore and I actually had to cut her off but I think the, the key to really getting snakes to breed is to feed a lot right before breeding season and right before they go on that fast. And it really triggers them to breed. And the, the other thing you have to think about is when they go on the fast, that is a long time to, to develop and build those eggs without eating. And they really need a lot of body reserves to fast for that long. And it, let me tell you, in the breeding season, sometimes it gets really scary. If you're going into the breeding season and your females don't have the weight, they go on a fast. I actually saw it and they, they get skinnier and skinnier and they don't eat for months and months and you really get concerned about your snakes. So I think it's it's not really the negative power feeding that people are thinking about when they think about power feeding. It's really essential to get a lot of rodents into your females right before you breed them. Because if you breed them, especially the first time you pair them up, they can instantly go off of food and they can go off of food for a very long time. So let me show you Lucy. <laughs> and actually I fed her a lot of rats. She hasn't eaten for three weeks. It's actually been over three weeks and you see she actually lost all the weight from those those rats I gave her and she's looking pretty thin. I don't know if she'll eat again but hopefully she'll take another round of rats before she goes on our long breeding fast. So here's Lucy's enclosure. She is in a six foot cage made custom made by Brace Exotics and I have this little lock here and I keep her locked <laughs> so she can't get out nobody else can get in and she's been stuck in a really bad shed and let me see kind of what mood she's in here uh it eh, looks like she's in a good mood and it looks like a lot of her shed's really starting to come off i've been trying to spray her down a little bit and rub it off and really increase the humidity but you could definitely tell that she's lost a lot of the weight that she had from those 10 rats and you can see kind of a, a little dimple down her <laughs> down the middle of the top of her body that she actually did, lost that dimple when I actually fed her that that many rats but she's actually doing pretty good she's uh, I saw some interesting activity I didn't actually see a lock when I bred her with my other reticulated python so this is a reticulated a white albino reticulated python she's 50 percent Jampea dwarf and she's about I'd say she's coming up on three years old and I don't think she'll get much bigger than this hopefully not <laughs> and the mainland retics they get about 300 pounds so I'm hoping this is as big as she'll get and really what I'm hoping for is that this year she gives me a clutch of eggs for the very first time which would be pretty awesome. So I've actually had this happen. I've been selling snakes at the reptile shows and a few months after the show I'm going through my racks and some of my videos and taking weights on my hatchlings and people will comment below my videos and they'll say hey wait a minute your snake is a lot bigger than my snake <laughs> and really you have to keep in mind that it, it all comes down to the size of the rodents and really it doesn't matter especially when they're hatchlings how big they are at any particular point because once they reach adult and they start eating rats they grow really quickly and it's it's 
it's not really a rush to get to the point where they're laying eggs. It's typically two to three years, and sometimes it's sooner, and sometimes it's later. And, and a lot of times they'll eat really fast, and then they'll stop eating. They'll go on a fast, and it's, 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 it's totally unpredictable. And if they're way behind, sometimes they can catch up really fast. And another thing you have to think about, too, is the proper size of a rodent to feed a snake. And when I first started getting into ball pythons, I actually thought there's no way that a snake could eat a rat this big. It just didn't seem realistic that they could wrap their whole mouth around a rodent that size. So, uh, so I actually started feeding rodents the size of the head of the ball python. And that's not what you want to do. You want to actually feed a rodent the size of the thickest part of the body of the ball python. So take a look at this. If you take a look at one of my snakes, uh, for example, my pastel pinstripe, you look how, how small her head is and you would think, yeah, that, that snake can only take, you know, like a mouse size or even smaller compared if you're looking at her head. But keep in mind, she can actually take a rodent that's as thick as this part of her body here. She can stretch her whole mouth around a big fat rat. It's pretty incredible. So you definitely want to go, I would say, maximum to the thickest part of the body and probably the minimum, I'd say about half as thick as the thickest part of the body. So that wraps up my discussion of power feeding your ball pythons and the proper way to feed your snakes. So thanks for watching and I will see you next time.